I don't know what to say. I thought I had something cool planned, and then I lost it. Cool. But, poor Z Python. Let's Here we are. We are on our way to Repticon Dallas. Let's do it. We are here. Repticon, grapevine. What are you doing? I'm putting on my headband and fell off. Ew. Check out this white lip python. White lips are usually super defensive and super squirrely when you're holding them, but this one's super chill. All right, so here we have a scaleless corn snake. So actually all scaleless corns derive from an emery corn cross. So um, the first scaleless corn were, was a result of an emery and corn snake pairing. So every scaleless corn snake is actually a hybrid snake. And as you can see, unlike the ball pythons, the scaleless corn snake is mostly scaleless. So they'll have a varying degree of scales. This one's almost completely scaleless, besides the ventral scales there. So the ventral scales allow the corn snake to move a lot better than, say, if you look at the uh, scaleless ball python, they move kind of weird. They don't grip right. But uh, these corns have ventral scales and make them a much hardier animal and much more successful animal than the scaleless ball python. And also the scalelessness, it shows off the red a lot better than, you know, say if you have a normal corn, um, the scalation for whatever reason makes it a little bit more washed out, more brown color, but as you can see it really, really cleans it out with no scales there. And this guy has a bunch of white spots going up down the dorsal and stuff like that. We used to do this speed competition you know, back in the day with kids. Never got Dude, that fast. good pattern down there. Nah, I can't do Man, that. Man, he like can, that now, he can beat me. I'm like, I don't know how you do that. We need a scaleless corn. Do you guys think we should start a scaleless corn snake <laughs> collection? <laughs> no. Scaleless project? Oh shit. This is Andy Hine. He actually has a rare condition where he's allergic to sleeves. He can't wear sleeves at any time. I don't have enough money for sleeves. He likes curly fries and cheeseburgers. The common snapper? Yep. Are alligator snappers legal to keep here? Yes, but you need a permit. Well, you not really need a permit, you need like the receipt saying that you bought. It was like Captain Bray. So you yes. can just like pick it up off. Yeah, because you can find them nat naturally in the state of Texas. Gotcha. Well, you can find these two in Texas, but you know. This is a dwarf caiman. Despite their name, they get up to four to six feet. These guys are from South America. Not uh, the greatest pets in the world. If he didn't have this rubber band around his mouth, I don't think we'd be doing this. But uh, just an awesome looking animal. You wanna get like B-roll? Some Cayman babies. So what we have here is a tangerine, white, and yellow leopard gecko. So the tangerine is actually a lime bread trait that brings out more of the oranges in the animal. Then the white and yellow is the dominant gene that 50% uh, of the babies are going to inherit this white and yellow gene. Um, quite frankly, I don't know much about leopard geckos, but I really like the look of the orange and the white and you know, patternless in comparison to the normal leopard geckos. Should we film him? Who do we have? How's the bite? Huh? How's the bite? Looks like he added more, I'm sure. <laughs> you can't even really see it. No, you can't. She's still worried though. I know. I've never had anybody freak out as badly as you did. Right, here I have a gray banded king snake. These are native to West Texas here. And uh, people locally collect these and have been breeding them in captivity for quite a long time. 
So locality information is usually pretty important and there's a few localities that have distinct characteristics. This one here is a West Lang tree. So they go by either town or even mile markers or GPS coordinates. But as you can see, they're just gray and orange. And this is kind of the look I'm going for with some of my corn projects, but these kink snakes are heavily feed on amphibians and reptiles in the wild, so they are a little bit harder to get started and they are pretty small. But just awesome looking animals. Some can be really nippy or even they say chewy as babies. But, um, you know, when you go in, you just kind of read the demeanor of the animal, you know, keep your fingers out of its mouth and you'll probably be just fine. Uh, my name's Dave. Oh, what's the name of the business? Mobile Exotics. <laughs> now that you know. Now that I know. Yeah. yeah new, new name at the first of the year. Huh? Gotcha. Uh, yeah, so we don't do too many of these Womas. Um, just a couple clutches every single year, but um, I think these guys are really great. So you, you bred that guy? Yeah, this one's produced. Um, the eggs can be a little difficult sometimes. It's, um, they need a very low humidity for the eggs. Even if one drop of water gets on, a lot of times the eggs go bad. Really? So you gotta keep um, the eggs not necessarily dry, but not damp. Uh, yeah, like I said, these guys are great. Um, like I said, they, as long as you put the time in, handle them enough, they won't be too bad. Some of our adults are kind of mean because we bought a couple as adults. But um, most of our babies we produce seem to be pretty good. Here I have a Trans Picos rat snake. So kind of like those gray bands that I showed you earlier, these are native to West Texas. Obviously the Trans Picos region. And uh, these come in a few different forms. There's a blonde phase, there's an exanthic, exanthic blonde, and so forth. But um, you can see, like, like a lot of other rat snakes, they have those big bug eyes, but these guys have more of a nice blue silvery eye as well as the bow ties, kind of like a um, boa constrictor down the dorsal pad in there. Good, clean belly, nice sand color, lets you blend in in the uh, environment down there. I want this one. Okay, what are you buying? What are you buying? Refty chip. Not a paid sponsor. And? It's Tom's. Is that? You have a website? Yep. What is it, Andy? How many shows have you been to, brother? <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, you're here. You don't need yeah, a website. Every show, bro. <laughs> <laughs> SouthernReptileSupplies.com. There you go. You can buy shit online? You can buy whatever you want online. <laughs> All right. I'll ship it to your door for 10 bucks. How's that? <laughs> to me, like personally? Anything. Can I have Refty chip? Yep. I don't care what you order on it. It's $9.99. Really? You sell bedding on there? I do not sell bedding on there. I was about to say, I'm about bedding to is pick up you. only. Glass <laughs> and bedding. Uh, I do sell the other, the smaller bedding, but not, not repertoire because it's just so heavy. No more rusty pliers. <laughs> say bye to the people. Later, people. See you next time. Absolutely. The mic. Can you can you say something? <laughs> say something. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, lame. <laughs>
So all is good. And that's it. I call that a successful day. Hope you guys liked the Reptile Expo and everything we showed you. Please like, comment, subscribe. And if you made it this far, you're on the team.